Do you like nightmares? The big changing dreams can often be the nightmares. They point to where the shadow is and where the healing needs to be in order for us to not just incrementally transform and change, but to radically quantum leap in our changing. When the nightmares do come, say, come to mama, I baked a cake for you. Let's not shove you back in the closet and, and send you deeper underground. Any shadow pushed underground isn't just twiddling its thumbs, it's growing fangs. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever had bone-chilling dreams or nightmares and wondered what in the world do they mean, then do we have the It's All In Your Dreams show for you. Today I'll be talking with world-renowned dream expert and dream interpreter to the stars, the dream doctor, Kelly Sullivan Walden, the author of at least 10 books and four oracle decks, including several co-author chicken soups for the soul about her book, It's All in Your Dreams. And that's what I want to talk with her about today, about finishing your dreams and how to use your dreams and nightmares to change your life. That plus we'll talk about Wolf Piles and Mama Wolf, President Snow, Guest House Poem, Grandma Bishop, and I See Dead People, and what in the world a Cyclops albino, albino lumberjack chasing through the forest has to do with anything. So welcome to the show, Kelly. Are you ready to shine? I am so in the dream world already. I can't believe I've never had in my whole life of doing interviews like this, I've never had anybody introduce me like that and incorporating some of the iconic dreams I've had in my past. You've done some research, Michael. I'm impressed. Wow. President Snow and the wolf file. What? We're going to have fun. So before we dive right into things then, and we mentioned this off air, do you like nightmares? I kind of love them. I'm kind of impassioned about them because I feel like they are a, a predecessor to great change if we allow it. It's definitely the cosmic highlighter pen that points to where the problem is. And just like in nature, where there's a quote unquote problem or poison, just like um, with poison ivy, poison oak, jewel weed grows next to it. If we can see the problem, if we can see the poison and we just look just to the right of it or just to the left of it, we'll see the solution. And it's gratifying to me to work with people in their nightmares. All dreams are wonderful. Don't get me wrong. I'm not prejudiced against the flying dreams and all the wonderful sexual dreams and winning the lottery dreams and hanging out with Jesus dreams. But I, I feel like the the big changing dreams can often be the nightmares. And they're also the most, they're the ones that we have the most prejudice against. So I feel like an advocate for like honoring the nightmares. They they point to where the shadow is and where the healing needs to be in order for us to not just incrementally transform and change, but to radically quantum leap in our changing and like quicken our inspiration and our awakening. Woohoo! We're going to go into two fun, in quotes, dreams of mine later on. We're going to go into one with a great white shark. We're also going to go into one last night, which had, get this right, Putin, Howie Mandel, Mick Jagger, and I believe Weird Al Yankovic, all in the same dream. <laughs> oh, my God. And you're going to tease me with that and make me wait to unpack <laughs> Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Ah! Okay. okay, fine. And, and, and one more tease for people. How important is it to finish our dreams? And then later on, can you share with us how we do it? Yeah, I think that's very important. We can't bring up the conversation about nightmares and leave that piece out. It's like, if you don't have the solution, then you kind of just want to avoid the conversation altogether. But if you've got the solution, it's kind of like, well, let's talk about it because here's a way to not just put a Band-Aid on it, but to really heal it from the deepest place, from the inside out. So I kind of have a formula for doing that, and I'm so happy to share it. Thank you. How important is it? And I know you're biased. This is, this is kind of preaching to the choir. But how important is it what happens to us in our dreams? It's incredibly important if we are people that are that are looking to make the most of why we bothered to incarnate here in the first place. If we don't want to just stumble and bumble our way through life and live, as Henry David Thoreau said, lives of quiet desperation, which is the default mode for human. Um, 
if we want to live lives that are filled with choice and vitality. It's kind of like the <laughs> the George Bailey character in the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Did you ever see that, Michael? A long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. Well, it's it's kind of an archetypal story of how all of us, He most of the movie is him griping about how things just aren't working out the way they're supposed to. And he's, he's hurt and he's pissed off and life is just, it's done him wrong. And he's just a, becoming a bitter old man. And then he has this awakening and I won't tell you exactly how it happens, but this awakening is, I want my life. I want this life. I chose this life. It's mine. And he comes running toward it with the prayer. I hope I get to stay alive to, to have this life with all of its brokenness and all of its quirky things and all of the things that, that don't work out. Yes, I choose it. I want it. And with that, that energy creates this magnetism that allows people, places, and circumstances to come to him that are fortuitous and that are better. And so it's kind of like that awakening. That's why I think dreams are important and i and i think we should all be dreaming more because the dreaming gives us the ability to step behind the curtain behind the scenes so we can see what's really going on and then we can come back with that awareness into our our waking lives and do it with more of an awakened step a more of an awakened approach love the ones we're with instead of fighting against them and and open up and access that place where life is just sweet and good no matter what's going on so that's one element one facet of the diamond of what dreams can bring us there's so many others but i think to me that's the big one that i that i tend to focus on thank you and there's several directions i want to go with this first off i'm thinking of the ashuar the people of the brazilian rainforest and, and ecuador who would say the waking world is the dream world and the dream world is the waking world as we start to unravel our dreams we get a greater understanding of what's going on in our waking world Yes, it's so true. It's so true. In fact, there this is this is kind of off, like off in a brand new tangent. I've never talked about this before, but apparently there's this this book that's supposed to be the most important book ever in the 20th century. Jordan Peters talks about this book um, called Gulag Archetypia or something about a man who who was basically sentenced to death in a gulag in Russia. And and he, long story short, he begins to not just dream, but kind of treat his life as if it were a dream. And he recapitulates everything that happened while sitting in his cell. He redreams his life. He reimagines it. He he imagines that he could make amends for all that he did. He owns his part. And there's something so powerful in just doing that internally that the ultimate result was that it was kind of the collapse of the Soviet Union this book that he wrote as a result of this internal work. So what's so important about this is the work we do on the level of the dream, the level of the waking dream, and the level of the nighttime dream. It's kind of like that dreaming part of our mind that can rethink something, that can reimagine and play it out. It's so powerful that we literally could change things on the other side of the planet in Ukraine. We could if we really owned that everyone that's in this war is us. And if we could rewire ourselves in what we would call the waking dream right now, but the the Australian Aborigines would call this is this is the dream time. You're absolutely right. And the Ashawar concur. But we just like in a like when we play with a nighttime dream or become lucid in a nighttime dream, we change things and then there's an outer result that follows. So Yes, I could go off on how important it is to consider that we we can alter not just our consciousness, but our consciousness does have a ripple effect that does touch the world. So we don't have to run around like this, like the quote, and I'll shut up after I say this for a second, give you a breath, but give myself a breath. But there's a there's a quote, and I can't remember who said it. We don't have to run all over. The lighthouse doesn't have to run all over the island trying to find ships to save. The lighthouse just stands still and beams. So there's something in our ability to stand still with what we've got, altering our waking dream, our nighttime dream in the presence of our own consciousness. And that radically does change things. And there's so much evidence of that. 
we have a school of mystics and and what we're teaching is that to elevate consciousness to shift humanity is the inner work it's not about and that's what you're doing it's not about going and running with a flag or a gun or a god knows what it's about how much we shift on the inside. It's interesting. This leaps way ahead. And I want to come back and I want to come back to your, to your history and, and tandem dreaming and, and a potential awakening at age 24. There's a lot of good stuff we have to cover. But I think of there is both an individual dream and then there is the collective dream. And so a month ago or so, I woke up. Now, I, um, my heritage is uh, Ukrainian Jew and Russian Jew. And so I woke up after a dream about a month ago, lost in a forest between the Ukraine and Russia, right before I heard that the war had started. And I got, I got tears now. But we, I believe, are all bathing in this energy. And if we can learn how to work on the other side, just like this gentleman who with Gulag Archetypia, we can heal the world's ills from the inside and through our dreams. Oh, my God. That is, the, that is such an epic dream. And thank you for having that. And thank you for bringing it. And what a the perfect person to have this dream and to, and to recognize, I mean, it's in some way, maybe slightly easier for you to recognize the Ukrainians and the Russians within you because you have that heritage. But the truth is we all do. We all do. Your dream is a collective dream. I believe we are, if we were to own it, it's hard on our ego to own that. It's a lot. I mean, it's hard for us to own the the best stuff and the worst stuff. Those are both shadow aspects. But if we can do that, then there's no more war in us. There's a ceasefire and there's the possibility of reallocating our inner resources instead of on defense spending and creating better weapons of mass destruction and distraction. We can use that energy toward creation and but we but it starts with us saying yeah i am there's a putin in me oh oh there's they're all in me oh he was in my dream last night we will get there shortly he was in my dream last night but before that let's go back to your childhood because my wife jessica and i were very curious about this you did something called tandem dreaming and i'm wondering even if there's a protocol for doing this but what were you experiencing with your sister for those who haven't heard me tell this part, this is kind of part of what I think has put me on this path without me realizing it. It's what's been pushing me. I have four sisters and the sister closest to me in age is Shannon. And she hates it when I call her out, but I'm saying, hey, Shannon. And she's a year and a half younger than me. And in all the different configurations of all the moving that we did, she was always, we always shared a bedroom. And then I became really aware of it when my mom came into our bedroom and she told us this in the morning yelling at us because we were it was like three o'clock in the morning and we were up we were talking and she thought we were just being naughty and not going to bed so she came in to say girls go to sleep but we were asleep we were in bed both of us with the covers pulled up but we were talking to each other our eyes were closed we were having a conversation about school about boys about whatever it was and it's like wait a minute they're up, but they're not. What in the heck? So that was like kind of an, a third person proof that there was this connection that we had. So that was sort of part of it. And then there were other conversations that my sister and I would have over breakfast cereal in the morning. I would start to talk about a clown and she would say, oh my God, was he, did he, was he pink and did he have clouds in it? Like, yes, wait a minute. And he was a little scary, but oh, and we would finish each other's dream sentences about characters that didn't exist in our waking reality. And we still do to this day, every once in a while, we still like, if I share a dream with her, she'll say, Oh my God, that's where I was too. There's, and we'll, we'll finish each other's sentences still. It's probably not as much, but there's still this incredible psychic connection. So that kind of put us on the path of paying attention to dreams. I never did it on purpose. It was never something that I sought out. It was something that was very passively just a gift that landed on my doorstep without any effort. And now in my waking life, I realize, yeah, there, there probably is, there is a protocol. There are people that are serious lucid dreamers. There's so many different levels of lucid dreaming. And I, I consider myself sort of a baby in the lucid dreaming world. I have, I have them and I am, I'm kind of on the brink of taking it to the next level, but people like Robert Wagoner, who I just interviewed for the shift network, dream work, dream work. We had him on work. here as well. 
<laughs> yes. Okay. So just being in his presence, I feel like he empowered me in my lucid dreaming. But I know that with with somebody like that, you could, I mean, and I think with anybody with a strong enough intent before bedtime, you could say to your beloved sleeping in the bed next to you, hey, let's meet somewhere. Hey, let's solve this problem in our dream. Hey, what do you want to explore? What do you want to dedicate our dreaming to tonight? Problem solving or creation or exploring, ending the war, whatever that is. I would say the protocol, if there was one at the very least, is a strong intent before going to sleep, like a clear intent, a simple intent, not too lofty, not too many words, but a clear focused intent, even if you could boil it down to a single word that could be repeated as you go to sleep as sort of a bedtime story as a little chant, a mantra, and then have your dreams, let them be what they be. And then upon awakening, first thing that you do, let it be recording your dream. Don't take any of them for granted, like, ah, oh, that was silly. Ah, oh, that was just about grandma. No, no, no. Just be a dutiful secretary that just takes dictation, write it down, and then compare notes. See what common denominators you had. See if you were able to, in fact, be in the same place. And maybe if you became lucid in that, then you would you would each actually have a cognition of each other in the dream. So there's no end to where you can go. And this is what's fun about partnership, a, a love relationship Often without dreams and dream work, people within a little, within a few years of being together think they know each other. And it's kind of like, oh yeah, my beloved, been there, done that. I know them moving on. Maybe the grass gets a little greener somewhere else. But if you open up the realm, realm of dreams in a personal relationship, you never, you never scratch the itch. You never finish getting to know your partner. You never get to know the whole mansion of expansion of who they are. There's always another room to explore. So it's it's kind of amazing. Thank you. And mansion of expansion, I like it. I want to talk about intention because, well, there was a, a couple weeks ago, I'd been having a lot of heavy dreams. And you, you heard the, the start of some heavy dreams recently. And, and I said, all right, angels and guides, that's who I go to. Angels and guides, tonight I declare I want a fun dream. And so I end up swimming down to the water's edge, which how do you swim to the water's edge if you're not in the water yet? But I'm swimming down to the water's edge in this dream. And um, I have a unique, I don't know if it's unique. I have a, a super power in my dreams. I don't fly around that much like Neo, but what I do is I can breathe underwater. And so I'm breathing underwater and that's a regular thing for me. I'm breathing underwater. I get to, to the water's edge, I'm underwater and I come upon a great white shark. And, and this great white shark turns to me and you can kind of see all the wrinkles on its neck and it kind of smiles and it goes and it wants a chin scratch <laughs> and I'm chin scratching a great white and he puts out his fins so that I can give him a belly scratch and he's upside down and and he's happy and at some point he's he's like a puppy this wasn't dangerous he's he's like teething on my on my arm nothing dangerous or anything he's just completely this lovable creature and I just wake up so so happy and I'm like thank you I bet everybody listening or watching is having dream FOMO right now I want to tell everybody you don't ever have to have dream FOMO because when you hear somebody's dream like hearing Michael's dream the part of me that's listening to you Michael it's like my soul ears are listening and whenever we and dreams are the language of the soul and they connect with our soul, according to Paulo Coelho, when one of us is tapped into our soul, which you must be by definition, when you share a dream, you're tapping into the soul of the world. And that means we're all sort of sharing this dream. So I got the chills just now because I feel like I just got to scratch the chin and the belly of this great white shark. Oh, my heaven, this is magical. So I want to ask you a couple quick questions. May I? So just in a few words, if I was an alien from another planet and had no idea what is a great white shark, I don't want the Wikipedia definition, but what's the essence of it? What's what's it like? What's a great white shark like? Power, strength, danger, um, <laughs> sharp. <laughs> It, it is an animal that can be known for ferocity, but it is also sleek. 
It is an, also an animal that I believe does not sleep. It is an animal that is one of the oldest and therefore probably the wisest on the planet. It is older than the dinosaurs. Wow. So if I was an alien, scratching scratching a being on its chin and its belly what what is that what is that what what why would that dynamic exist what must be present in order for that to happen either incredible courage inside of me or incredible peace inside of the shark. There are videos online of scuba divers or people, even free divers, who are able to hold such a special energy that they can pet a shark. I've never seen them pet the belly of the shark, but I have seen these videos. So you have to hold such a sacred space and be in such a good place. I used to uh, swim off of the coast of Maui where there were tiger sharks, reef sharks, not, not the big boys, but you had to, and I swam with a shaman, you had to hold good energy or you could be uh, nibbled upon, shall we say. And so your energy must be, to use a Hawaiian term, pono, pure, true. Okay, so with the essence of shark that is powerful, strong, sharp, ferocious, it's the oldest being. It doesn't sleep. It's ancient. And um, it. so is there a place in your life where being that way might be helpful or might be useful? Is there anything that resonates with that? Sleek, powerful, perhaps all that I do. What's most interesting to me is, and I had a shark visit uh, uh, during ceremony and the dorsal fin came up before I went on a book tour many, many years ago, many moons ago. Shark is known for endurance. It keeps going. And that particularly right now, which dovetails with a, a recent dream this morning, nightmare, oh boy, um, it is a time where we get to keep going. Now we get to keep going collectively. And I feel like all of us, but maybe particularly with the work I'm doing, the work you're doing, we're processing dreams for the collective right now, not just for ourselves. We think it's just me. It isn't. It isn't for any of us. But because of that, we all get to have, and look, we just came through COVID. And now we're immediately to a war that's different than other wars because there's a red button potentially involved. So there is a level of stamina and endurance and needing to plug into wisdom and to get in a sacred energy that is perhaps essential for all of us right now. Okay. So that is the brilliance of this dream to call on it. I'm, I'm in the midst right now of, of creating an animal dream oracle deck where I talk about the animals that show up in dreams and my, my overview hypothesis, may I hypothesize Absolutely. about your dream? That's now my dream. Thank you very much. Um, I believe our our spirit animals come to us in dreams and often they're they're not the ones we expect. And and in many cases, our initial thought is, oh, oh my God, this is like this is scary. But when we just like in my being devoured by wolves dream, I'm empowered by it, and I can talk about that later. But And you leaned into it, sort of like leaning into the belly scratch of the shark. Exactly. So often the dreams of our, these power animals, they don't end the way yours did. Often we, we wake up in, in mid-chase where we're, being out, we're trying to outrun these, these creatures. But if we're smart, we'll figure out a way to move toward them. Carl Jung, the late great father of psychotherapy, talks in great depth about the shadow. And it's not just kind of this cute little thing, this little slice of the pie of life that, oh, we should embrace it, whatever. It's intense. It's the, it's in some way, it is the most important thing there is because our relationship to the shadow and to the shadowy creatures in life and in our dreams tells us everything about the quality of our lives. If we learn how to have the fortitude to embrace the sharks, I mean, often a shark is a kind of a quintessential, typical shadow animal. We, if For anybody who's seen the movie Jaws, which many of us, you know, have seen some and version of- wrecked our summer fun after that movie. And even our ability to go use the toilet, like afraid that Jaws is going to come. It's like, ah, it's like terror. It's the ultimate terrifying image, primordial. But yet, if so, if we- 
outrun the shark part of ourselves. And even, even in our waking collective world, we talk about like the sharks, the business sharks that are cold blooded and predatory, that the lenders that just like eat people and don't care. It's like this cold blooded predator. It, that's the typical way. And yet if we embrace it, if we look for what's good about it, what's wonderful about shark, there's so much we could unpack. Like you, you did the stealth and the the moving and the it doesn't stop and it's awake and there's and it's it's just energy. It's just energy and it's just like gravity is just energy. We can drop a flower into a basket with it. We could feed people with it. We can f- fruit falls from trees we can or a bomb could be dropped it's like the thing itself is is neutral it's what we do with it but the ultimate goal carl jung said this the goal of our dreams the goal of therapy the goal is to have all parts of ourselves every aspect all the sharks all of those things incorporated into our light as if we were all like all parts of ourselves marching in the same parade at the same time in sync playing maybe different instruments but we're playing in one big symphony as we march down the street no part left behind that's the goal so this dream about this cuddly sweet shark it's like this is this is the quintessential embrace the shadow make friends with the shadow, and now become a more powerful light bearer to this planet as a result of it. So let's go from there, because I don't want to make it out that all of my dreams are fun. Usually it's not that case. So I'm going to go to this morning's dream and see how we can learn how to lean into the shadow. So I had one of those dreams this morning where knowing you're in a dream, you're not lucid in it. You're like, I I should just get up. And the dream just keeps going and keeps going. And you're tortured or maybe not by the end of it. In this case, here are the details that I know. First off, I end up um, masquerading somehow, some way as Mick Jagger, which is interesting. I don't really follow his music. Great stuff, Rolling Stones. But I'm not like listening to the Rolling Stones and grooving on it on a daily basis. And so I've got, I'm masquerading as Mick Jagger and I write either a $30,000 or $300,000 check. It may have even been for rent on a place I was staying, which I was no longer going to be able to stay, which does have some parallels in my life. So I'm, I'm writing a check. I'm afraid if I take this to the bank, they're going to find me out. But now Mick Jagger in this dream doesn't look like Mick Jagger. He looks kind of curly, cute hair, almost like a, an older Howie Mandel, who I'm not familiar with almost at all, or a weird Al Yankovic, who I'm a little bit more familiar with. Kind of a pudgy version of one or both of them. And now I realize I've got to meet with Putin. And if Putin finds out that I'm masquerading as Mick Jagger and I'm not the real deal, I'm dead. And so I'm going over and over and over in my head, what am I going to do about Putin? What am I going to do about Putin? How am I going to get through this? How am I not going to find out? How am I going to live? And then I finally woke up. Oh, this is so wonderful. This is a great dream. And this and what happens typically in a dream that is emotionally charged, we tend to eventually wake up. And I like to say, one of the things I say ad nauseum is a nightmare is an unfinished dream. And if just like watching a horror movie, if you walked out of the movie five minutes before the ending, you would leave in, in a state of terror. And it's only at the end that things get wrapped up. And there's, and usually the hero ends up exalted with some superpower as a result of it, or there's some, there's hope. There's like, ah, okay, I'm glad I got through that. But so it's just, so we just need to finish the dream. There's a formula that I have. I'm always playing with formulas, but I call this the fear to fuel formula. So fear, fear stands for face it, embrace it, ace it, and replace it. Face it, embrace it, ace it, replace it. Yes, you got that. And fuel stands for a future that's unlimited, enlightened, and liberated. So the main work of it is in the is what you do with whatever scares you. So in this case, let's just imagine there's so many questions I want to ask you, but we'll do an expedited version. So 
So um, if you could like go, like if you're back in this dream, but you're lucid now because you're awake. And if you wanted to bring in a guide to help you, you could pick anything, anybody, you could bring in your shark to help you. You could bring in a guide. I mean, you, you brought up um, Archangel Michael or Raphael, but whoever you feel that you want to bring in to help you with this dream. For some bizarre reason, I want to go back to um, my pet pumpkin who I had for 17 and a half years, who is a coyote hybrid. And so she was two thirds or three quarter coyote. And she raised me more than me raised her as an adult. And um, I don't call her in regularly, but this, for some reason, I'm like, I want pumpkin by my side. Fabulous. Okay. Yeah. So you never want to go back in to the scary thing completely alone. Not, not all the time. Sometimes we do, but so you got pumpkin by your side. So with all the things that you could use to dis all the words you could use to describe pumpkin, give me one adjective that describes the feeling tone of being in the presence of pumpkin. And the feeling tone of being in her presence. Oh, you're going to laugh because she's got that, that trickster coyote energy and she's always having a ball. Even on her last day here on earth, she was pointing out the hopping grasshoppers and trying to say, look at how much fun they have. And she knew that was going to be her last day. So the trickster, but the funster at the same time. Absolutely. Like, the oh fun my. of life, that this is all joyous. Her last walk, she heard this music and was kind of tugging at the leash. And so we walked very gingerly with her and crossed the road in Boulder, Colorado. It was an open air concert and they were playing the song by Bobby McFerrin, Don't Worry, Be Happy. That's her. Oh, pumpkin. Okay, pumpkin's here. So let's just imagine, I believe a dream is a parallel plane. It's not just a dream. It's over when you wake up. The dream isn't over. It still exists on a parallel plane. So even though we're in the waking state right now, we can, we can, and you just shared the dream with us, which means you have a tendril vine connection to it. So we can kind of get there. So in some way, it's completely legitimate. In fact, they do this at Harvard Medical School. They do this all over the place in sleep studies and dream studies is just talking about what would you do differently if you were back in that dream. So let's just, so the face it is where you go back in to the dream. You go, you pick it up where it leaves off and you, but you've got pumpkin by your side and now you can sort of freeze the action of maybe being in, in the presence of Putin. Where would you, where would you pick up? this dream where, where you are you standing in front of Putin as Mick Jagger what's the what's the scene I'm gonna have to Scooby-Doo this one <laughs> so in, in Scooby-Doo they always you know unzip the mask <laughs> and the villain in that case is behind the mask in this case I'm gonna unzip Mick Jagger I'm going to be me and now I'll face Putin brilliant oh wow so you're really facing him like it's your face but it's facing your him as me as not you. as pretending to be somebody else. That's my big fear in the dream. And that obviously, if I dive into it, there's a worry and concern about, am I being real? Am I true? Am I a fraud? Right. And he'd be able to sniff it through. So you've just eliminated that part of you'll, you're going to die if you're inauthentic. So you just did the face it. Well, actually, there's one more part of the face it is to look at, look at him, look at Putin, even with you being Michael. So if you could, what they said about Babe Ruth, the great baseball player, he said when asked how he was able to hit so many home runs, he said that he had this strange superpower where he was able to slow down time and see this ball coming at him at 100 miles an hour. He slowed it down so he could get in just the right position to be able to knock it out of the park. So right now you're like Babe Ruth. So it's like we're slowing things down so you can actually see what's coming at you. So what do you notice as you're really looking at him? See, this is where things get interesting because I know immediately where I go to and I go to a place of there's a wounding in his heart and I want to help heal it and I'm sending him so much love, so much love. That's why my hands went to my heart when you started to say that and it's just immediately dropping into a place of love. There's no room for fear. I, I go to love. Brilliant. So you just looked past his facade, his Scooby-Doo. And you just went right to that wounded place in his heart. And I'm feeling it right here. I've got this little ache right here. <laughs> I'm feeling that. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so now you're facing it, meaning you're really seeing it. One way to not transform is to not really see things, to just take a, a little flash and make up a story about it. One way to transform is to really see it, is to really face it and look around and see, oh, he's just a wounded little boy. 
oh, I could do something about this. So to embrace it is to recognize maybe even the wounded little boy over here. Like I have that too. Oh my God, I have a wounded little bo- little boy. I do. Okay, so I'm not just going to beam love at him. I'm going to beam love at my little boy. I'm going to embrace that wounded little boy that hurts his his heart just hurts so much and to compensate for that he does all kinds of things to try to he's looking for love in all the wrong places but oh honey i got you so that's the embrace it that's the e you're and then in some way you're sort of embracing that little boy in him you're not condoning his adults poor choices and behavior that are destructive you're embracing the part of yourself that's in the mirror and then we've got the ace it. So in some way, you've just changed the dream. And to ace something is to, instead of being timid and scared and on the on the, the, the kind of the little one, you've become the big one. You've become the father. You've become the God in the scene. So what do you notice now? How is How is this changed? Well, I have the power to help Putin to feel safe to help Putin to feel everything's going to be all right, and to help bring peace to the situation by letting him know it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So this is acing it. You now are in the power position. You now have the ability to do something. You're not, you're not at the effect. The leverage is in your favor. So this is how you ace it. You've just done this naturally. And in some way, so let's just imagine that you've spent hours and hours, maybe days, months, years in this healing process, so much so that you get to the point where it's complete. So now we come to the R. You're replacing this former enemy terror, terror -er, into something else. What is, what is now present now that the work is complete? What is, what's the replace it? What do you, who has he become? Wild. I'm seeing, I don't know which one it is. Might be Raphael. I'm seeing an archangel that's replaced with a golden halo. Oh my God. Wow. It's, it's almost like if, if this were my dream, I'd be feeling like the way my dad was a policeman, a police chief, and how sometimes former drug dealers, drug addicts would make the best undercover cops because they knew that terrain. So it's like taking the skill of being of destructive, but knowing how to apply the medicine to that exact place. So it creates an angel out of what was formerly a devil. Or So there's a different being there. There's this archangel. He's gone from one extreme to the next it's even sort of like the story of the devil itself. The story is that he was the most beloved angel and made certain choices. But but ultimately, the story is that, that that energy comes back to the light. So now there's this archangel that is that you're present to. So you've just replaced. So you've faced it, embraced it, aced it, and replaced it. So now you can stand. And we'll, the fuel part is a little bit quicker. You just imagine for a moment a future now, now you move forward. Because sometimes if we don't deliberately move into the future, the ne- the what's next, we'll tend to recycle the pain and just put it somewhere else because it's habitual to have had that ache. It's become so normal that we don't know how to live with taking that splinter out. We just need to re-inject ourselves unless we create a future. So imagine a future now where this this is the case, where, where all the Putins have been transformed into into archangels. If so, I'm just going to kind of give you all of these, and then you tell me what's on the other side. A future that's in that's unlimited. We're not stuck in an old story anymore, and it's enlightened, meaning you're, there's now light that's filling up this space, and you are liberated, as are we all. So. What is that future? Like, give me a little glimpse of what you what you notice after I describe that to you. What's what's present? There's flowers, there's love, there's joy, there's peace, there's interaction, there's happiness. This is the elevated state of consciousness of us all rising up as we are going from this terror and fear, showing our true selves, stepping forward into that and being amongst a being in the light. We are now in the light. And I love that you went straight for the collective, 
normally it's personal, then collective, but I love that you're thinking inspiration nation, or it's like you're you're about like the the nation, you're about the world. So then how does that come back to you? What's the puzzle piece that you are in this this future with these flowers and these loving beings? It's it's a funny expression I'll use quietly on occasion. T <laughs> it's 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 like, oh goody. So <laughs> my job is done. My job is done. Yes. And then so we go it so we can keep playing here because the next version of this is those you and I who are in the business of inspiring and in some way healing and shedding light. What if what if people have it? Like they're inspired enough. They're full of light enough. I mean, we might work ourselves out of a job and have to recreate ourselves. In some way, the jobs that we have right now exist because of the darkness, because of that contrast. But who might we be if we didn't have to keep recreating that in order to have value? So there's this inquiry. Who do we, how do we fit into that world, that future? Maybe we should, like as Barbara Marks Hubbard would say, like kind of pre-pave that future where we have a new job, we have a new, we're reassigned and allow that future to inform our present and let that move us with, with grace as we, as we move toward that. That's quantum evolution. So we're not, we're not scared about unzipping our Scooby mask and we, we're, we can be graceful in the midst of it because we've already dreamed it. So we're related to it and we trust it. Humanity zero on a scale of zero to 10 of, of higher dimensional beings. We're at a level zero. We play with guns and buttons and all this stuff. And it is fear and pain that directs us. We learn, we have a hard time learning. And I think that's why a lot of souls want to come to earth and others may stay away from earth. We learn through pain and discomfort. I believe there's a next level where we do not need to learn through pain and discomfort. Maybe that next level or an intermediary step is we become a dream to not. And we work on the inner world. We wake up from our dream, we write it down, and we go right back in, as you're saying. Because I teach automatic writing, where you're going to be in the morning conversing with the other side of the veil, and I bring my dreams to automatic writing. We go right back in to the dream world. We take the time, just like you did with me, 10, 15 minutes right here. And guess what? Instead of being going through the morning going, ah, <laughs> you are now vibrating at a higher level, and you are contagious at that higher level to everyone around you because of the inner work you've done. And if we're all, we wake up and go back in, how much is that going to shift consciousness? Exactly. I had a conversation with my sister a few days ago and this, this dream tandem dreaming sister, Shannon, and she was like, I feel so helpless about the war. What can I do? What can I do? I'm like, end the war in yourself. Just imagine it's all here. We can't do anything about what's external to us, but we can do everything about this. But often we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's nice. That's mamby pamby. That's like, I want to get out there and pick it and fight. And then I, then I, like by the sweat of my brow, that'll be doing something. But what if the work, the most important work is this, is just embracing the shark, embracing the Putin is as radical as that seems and how some people might hate us for even saying that, but it's, that's where we, that's, that's the work and the world needs the light that comes from that. I don't know that we're, that we serve anybody by running around like chicken little, <laughs> the sky is falling. The sky is falling. Somebody fix the sky. It's like fix your own sky. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a victimhood mentality. And it's vibrating at a vo very low level, at which when you're vibrating a low level, you not just attract, not law of attraction. For instance, if you're in a bad place, you're going for the junk food. You're not going for the health food. You're going for where you're vibrating at. So if we're focused on the news, the negative worthless stimulation, if we're focused on everything bad, the Hollywood of today, and, and I, I am a movie nut as well, but all these movies with killings and death and destruction and zombies and everything. That's the zeitgeist. If you tune into that, that's where you're going to be vibrating at. What if we heal ourselves, like you're saying, through our dreams and then choose a different station? dream a nots Woohoo! <laughs> oh, God, Michael. You are 
just uh, this you you're right this is this is i would say the best interview the best conversation this is so it feels grounded and high and bridging and like all of it and i so appreciate your courage your bravery to share nightmares there's debbie ford the late great debbie ford wrote a book the light side of the light chasers and it's like the people that are that are of the light that are working so hard to be helpful are sometimes the ones that are having some of the scariest most terrifying nightmares it's part of their work to bring light to the world but they but there's such a pathologizing making ourselves wrong for having those and not knowing what to do with them that we don't get to be the light bearers that we seek to be it's equal part exploring those high vibe experiences and hanging out with the angels. And I love the automatic writing. That's a great bridge tool. P.S. I love that. I can't say enough about that. But also when the nightmares do come, say, come to mama, I baked a cake for you. Let's not shove you back in the closet and, and send you deeper underground where you don't just sit idly, by the way, any shadow pushed underground isn't just twiddling its thumbs, it's growing fangs, it's getting hairier and scarier. So when it finally does leap out at us, it leaps out and it takes us out. So let's just open up the closet, clean it up and 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 embrace all those sharks and give them all belly rubs. Ultimately, they're all belly rubbable. And we can have the shadow kind of like my wolves becoming an ally and something that gives me strength to do what I do and to keep going as opposed to something that is like a like a thorn in my side that I'm having to compensate for. So, hallelujah. Thank you. Let's switch gear for just a few minutes, and then we'll go get Rue for a meditation here. Premonitions and visions. How do we tell the difference between something that's an aspect of ourselves or an aspect of, our coll- of the collective coming into our dream to be healed and a message that's coming to us that says, don't go down the alley today or call dad. So first of all, it's know thyself. That's what Shakespeare said. And one way to know the difference is by journaling and by paying attention to your dreams and recognizing the patterns. Because often we'll notice that there's a certain vibration, a certain feeling or certain characters that show up when the dream is precognitive or if it is a vision. It's a different kind of, there's a a friend of mine who gets like a pop-up, like it's like on a computer screen. And some people they're in a movie theater when when there's a particular message coming through. I hear a voice that's very male and strong and it cuts through. It's like, oh, okay, listen to this. This is something that is bigger than just a dream, like a regular, a regular dream. But really, we don't know our patterns until we pay attention and do research. It's like a Margaret Mead said, we must be the anthropologists of our own lives, and I would say of our own dreams. But then sometimes in order to know, we just have to watch and see how it plays out. It's so that we can know, oh, that was precognitive. Oh, that was a premonition. That was a vision. Oh, that was a gift for somebody else. That wasn't for me. But in the meantime, before we know, Why don't we look at every dream as if it were both about ourselves, our own personal lives, and perhaps something for the collective and or what if each dream is like a diamond and there's so many facets on it? It's never just one thing. There's some people that say, no, 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 certain dreams are obviously just for the collective. I'm like, but don't leave yourself out. There's a reason it came through you. There might be something that you're supposed to learn from this too. It's not just, I am here to have the message for the masses because I'm already perfect and I'm done. It's like, I can go to that last dream with Putin and I can, I can tell you there's a, certainly a fear of, in me. Or was it Amy Cuddy and, um, a fraud syndrome, or there, there's another word for it. There's, there's certainly uh, that imposter syndrome. Thank you, imposter yeah. syndrome. That's certainly yeah. inside of me as well. And then we get to, uh, we had twins coming. Baby, uh, 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 my wife was pregnant with twins. We lost one of the twins. The second one is due in a month. And so there's some healing there. There's also the, are things going to go well? Are things going to be safe? And we move as soon as she's born. We're just staying near the hospital. Where are we going? Which is that element of going to the bank and the checks and this doesn't feel like my home. So there are layers to this. Oh my God. One thing I love, I didn't get to mention this before because there was so much to that dream. But the idea of 
of many of us have the imposter syndrome. In fact, I'm, I would almost dare say everybody does to some degree, even if it's just tiny. But I love that the strategy in the dream is the way through this is to reveal myself, is to get honest. It's not to put on another layer and another layer and another layer. It's to unlayer and to reveal the masterpiece underneath. Like that's that's always the answer, which is so great. And I just have to recognize the synchronicity. Mick Jagger, there was a, a woman in one of my dream circles that had this great, she was going through a lot of like menopause sim- symptoms, just achy, breaky, tired. Ugh. And then she had this Mick Jagger dream that was, he he did that was a, he did something very different in that dream from what i understand she he brought her on stage and she and grinded on her <laughs> and she was like i'm grinding with but it was connecting her with her inner jagger and and it was a very in like enthusiastic and i've often thought if jagger if jagger showed up in my dream i've often thought he's not that talented he's kind of an imposter himself he's kind of just like how did he get how did he become a superstar what he just owned it <laughs> So there's so much more that we can unpack about the Howie Mandel and the Weird Al. And- you know, what's interesting about it, I, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole, but as much as Mick Jagger owned it, I don't know about Howie Mandel, but, but Weird Al owns other people's stuff. It's not his. He's imp- an imposter for every single song, deliberately an imposter. Oh, my God. Oh, I love it. Like, yeah, clearly he's not pretending to be that person. He's doing a caricature and in some way shedding light on it uh, through humor and play. And Howie Mandel, hmm, what's, if there was an adjective that came to you about him, what, give me one or two. I don't know what little I know, soft and sappy. Soft and <laughs> Sorry, ha- Howie, I don't know your music. My mom, she knows your music. I don't, but I would think, well, that's mom's music. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, there's, there's another wound in there, so. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh my God, so much to unpack that's personal and collective. I mean, but I I think it's I try to be as practical as I can, even though I live in this dream space that can be that can seem woo-woo, but it's like my my goal is to at least take the biggest part of the dream or the most bizarre or the most sharky or the most Putinish or the most whatever that thing is and and work on at least that. And then, of course, we could spend because we could spend all day. This could be your full time job is to just decode the dream and there'd be value in that. But I think the goal is to be able to take at least a little bit of the magic of the dream and incorporate it into our lives as we go about our our waking lives and knowing that that's enough because often because really the work is never done. It's never, ever we will never get to the bottom of any dream ever. (laughs) So we might as well at least take a piece of it and know that's good enough. Thank you. Few last questions, then I'll then I'll get Rue. And I want want everybody to know where to find your work. What can we learn from the Psenoics, the dream people? The work that I've done exploring their methodology, and there's so much to say about them, um, is this enlightened dream tribe, supposedly according to Kilton Stewart, the most enlightened group of people to ever live. And their approach was to do exactly what you did, Michael, in the dream. Have if there's something that scares you, you move toward it, and you, with the with the with the question. And if people hear nothing else from this whole conversation, I hope they hear this: to ask that scary dream creature, character, whatever it is, what's the gift you have for me? And to do your best to not wake up until you get it, even if you have to go back into the dream from the waking state get that gift because it's for you and and it's also for everybody else it's also for the tribe so what is this and then in some way that teaches you to not be afraid to to move toward the things that scare you to move toward the to face it embrace it ace it and replace it so that's my biggest takeaway from this annoy and there's a bunch of others but powerful beautiful thank you my wife is better at this than me and you've given me an idea right now which is she's better at facing her fear in the dream and and laughing at it and going i know your dream there are different techniques with lucid dreaming there's such a thing as a a technique of checking your watch repeatedly and see if the time changes or whole every time you go to the doorknob um you, you open the doorknob check your watch again um can we link up something in our conscious waking in quotes world so that every time we get in a dream and something freaks us out, we have trained ourselves to ask, what's your gift for me? 
the best way to do that is to practice it in our waking lives as well. Anything, we're, we're habit makers as humans. So if we are used to moving toward the things that scare us with curiosity and knowing that there's a gift in there, if we practice it in our waking lives, then we'll, we'll be practiced at doing that in the dream. And if we don't do it in the dream, it's okay if we don't, because just like we did with you and your, and your great white shark dream, and just like with your Putin dream, we're able to reconnect with it in your waking state and go, go in there and get, and get the gold. So that the best way to practice that and to, to do it lucidly is to just make it a habit even though, I mean, I call it ogle. It's my ogle formula. What's offending you? The G is for what's good about that thing that's offending you. Like you said, but what's good about the shark? Some people would say, there's nothing good about the shark. It's just all bad. But it's like, "Mm, let's really look. What's good about it? And then the L is for the looking glass. How am I like that? How, How do I do that? Or how might I benefit from being more powerful and and not giving up. And then and then the E elevate. Oh, how will I use this energy to now elevate what I'm working on in my waking life? Now that I have this awareness, what will I do with this? So that's another sort of alchemy way to look at dreams, but also anything that offends you in your waking life. Anytime you find yourself annoyed, pissed off, hurt, upset, like what's the gift in that? What's the gift? How is that trying to make me better? And you'll find it. Woohoo! Beautiful. <laughs> On that note, speaking of what's the gift, and I like that, going through life, and I tend to have a habit. So I have a, a kitty who's just come into the studio, um, and he is shredding things apart to let me know that he needs some food. And I'm going, what's the gift? I got uh, hit... <laughs> Four months ago on my wife's birthday, and that's where you know the dream world is the waking world and the waking world is the dream world. I'm riding my bicycle and got hit by an SUV, knocked unconscious, broke a bunch you of bones, did? surgery. Yes, yes. Wait, wait, what? When was this? Four just months recently? ago. No. <gasps> yeah. And here you are just yes. like you've never had a bad day in your life. Yeah. Whoa. I woke in the ambulance going, thank you, angels. Thank you, guides. I gave thanks was my first conscious thought. Because I know that there's a gift in all of it. And I'm going to cry because I was in a a, a ton of pain. (laughs) Excuse me. But there was a gift in there. And I imagine that you wouldn't have been able to have pulled that off had you not been practicing being grateful in other places in your life. And that was a well-toned muscle in your consciousness. Wow. That's exactly it. And look at how quickly you're recovering. I mean, I wouldn't have known that you were just hit by an SUV. And No, I've got, got some fun titanium parts in here, but I was out paddling the kayak yesterday. I've been out swimming. I'm getting strong on the bicycle in Zwift. Jessica has me riding indoors at the moment, <laughs> but I'm getting strong again. My God, I give you an award at the Transformation Award. That's amazing. And that point of view, because it's our mind-body connection, we all know. It's on, been on the cover of Newsweek and and everything. It's like those thoughts we think are either tonic or poison. So thoughts of gratitude are high vibe, and there's just quicker, faster healing that comes from that. It's just it just makes sense. It's not just an airy fairy kind of a thing to do, and it doesn't mean that you're not in pain. It doesn't mean just like in the, a course in miracles, they say, look at the crucifixion, but dwell not on it. So look at the pain, look at those circumstances, but come back to thank you, thank you, thank you. What's the gift here? What's the gift? And and seek and you shall find. Whatever you are looking for, you're going to find. Such a key point. Be careful what you look for as well, because this mind is not trained to go looking for the good stuff. <laughs> right. Until we make the habit, until we just create, it's just about grooves. It's just about habits. It's just about a, a playlist. If we don't like that playlist, we can alter it ever so slightly each day until it changes. Yeah, get some Mick Jagger, some uh, Weird Al, maybe some Howie Mandel. I love you, Howie. I got to send you love. All right. On that note, w- this is really, really fun, Kelly. Where can people go to find out more, to find your books, to find your decks, to find your program, to find your, your class or summit on the Shift Network, to find out everything and find out more? Oh my God. Thank you, Michael, so much. Okay. So the easiest place is to my website, which is kellysullivanwalden.com. And I always say, if that's too hard to spell, just go to ihadthestrangestdream.com. It'll take you to my 
that website. Everything is on there. Basically, what's coming up is the DreamWorks Summit through the Shift Network, where there's 40 hours of interviews of the greatest mystics and dreamers and dream teachers, Aboriginal, from all over the world. Just wisdom that will complete. It's like getting a doctorate in in dreaming. I've I've been <laughs> talk. I feel like I'm double Doctor Dream at this moment, having been in the presence of all of these amazing people. I thought I knew a lot about dreams, but I'm like amazing, and it's free on the Shift Network. You can pay for it if you want to have it, if you want to own it, but they offer it for free. So I have um a, a link to that from my website. And, and I'll, I'll pause you there before the Wild Women Nuns Wednesdays. I'm putting some giant arrows down below. I'm going to make it even faster and easier for people. Right down below in the description, you see a link to this entire Dream Summit. So right down below. There, you've got it. Click that button there. Okay, <laughs> please continue. I have a DreamWork practitioner training coming up for people who want to study with me to learn how I work with dreams and to take it to the next level to add a certification that's professional that will help you if you're already a therapist, if you're somebody who wants to just be better at doing dream work and 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 see the world through this lens. I I used to teach dream life coach training. It's it's the the upgrade version is dream work practitioner training and that's coming up and there's a link for that. Also Wild Women Wednesdays is a dream circle that I offer for women on the first Wednesday of every month. And there's information about that. And if you just go to my website and you just want a free meditation that is that's wonderful to help you get to sleep, and it drops in some hints about having really sweet dreams and also powerful dreams that will help you transform and help you remember those dreams, I have a free meditation that you get when you put your name and email address in on my website kellysullivanwalden.com. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I got that one more link to the Dream Summit down below. Any last words of wisdom you want to share before I go get Rue for a meditation? Oh, my heavens. I I just hope that people are inspired about their dreams, that they that they take what they've heard here and they don't just think, oh, this is for somebody else and I don't I don't have the ability. I hope that they they get that, wow, I have this other dreaming self. It's kind of like another life that I'm living that is connected to great intelligence, great solutions, great answers, great wisdom that is truly life-changing. It's like this mansion full of gifts that has your name on it. And it comes like you get one of them each morning upon awakening in the form of your dream. So I hope that you get inspired and excited about paying attention to them. And may I always like to say, don't take your dreams lying down. <laughs> How does it get any better than this? All right, hold on one minute. I'm going to go get Rue. I'm not sure what to do with Sir Meowser's the kitty at the moment, but um, we, we have a judicious uh, the, the mute button. The, the editors, <laughs> you won't hear anything, but wow, he's really going, if I take this as a dream, he is ripping stuff up right now. <laughs> right, my inner cat is just hungry. It's like, I want to be fed. I'm not going to just wait. I'm like, I want it now. I want my good now. I'm important. I'm self-advocating. <laughs> so hold on one brief moment here. Oh my Say God, I can't believe this. A new what? friend. What? I this know. is amazing. Hi, Rue. Oh, sweetie. Oh, he's beautiful. Hi, precious. Oh, I'm in love. He is a cool one. <laughs> you have a pet rooster named Rue. Oh my God, I love him. <sighs> one of the special things about Rue, and about roosters in general, but about Rue, is a cat's a sensitive creature. A rooster takes it to a whole new level because his entire beingness is about two things. Procreation and protection of the flock. And so he sees emotions. You can have a thought in another room that's not Pono, that's not pure, and he will start crowing and screaming because he's concerned for his flock. So he demands that you watch your thoughts and where you put your energy. 
If not, it is reflected very, very quickly. Now he has other sounds. He has sounds for love. He has sounds for hugs. He has sounds for amazing goodness. But he will let you know where your emotions are at. I had no idea. That is so beautiful. And I'm imagining that this is sort of the way you treated the shark in the dream too. That sweet, gentle, like... So would you mind leading us? He's melting at the moment. We'll see how this goes. He's just, he's loving your energy because he can feel your energy and he can hear you. They have much better ears and eyes than we do, uh, infinitely so, because they have evolved since the time of the dinosaur. It's a straight lineage. And so their senses have just gotten better and better and better. They can see prisms of light and something about 12 different uh, layers of light that we can't see. And if I wake up in the morning before, uh, particularly if I sleep in late, if I wake up and have a conscious thought, he will let me know daddy's awake before I've even moved. He'll know. The good news is he likes to sleep late. Thank God. (laughs) He has a dark room, his own bedroom, and he likes to sleep in so I can get my dream time in. I can get my automatic writing time in before he's ready to play. And and play for him is either we go hiking on the trails, but there aren't many trails around here, or he spends an hour on the rebounder with me in my arms, bouncing up and down because he wants his movement. (laughs) (laughs) He wants to play. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. So a little a little meditation that with with Rue? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll hold him here. A meditation for people having something to do with today's topic on dreams or helping us to discover our dreams or something important would be beautiful. Okay. So I'd love to invite you to either turn within by closing your eyes or just allow your gaze to be soft. And I want to invite everyone to imagine with their dreaming minds, with their imagination, that they are also holding their own version of Rue in their arms and feeling the oxytocin move through their body with this beautiful being near their hearts and on their lap. And in some way to feel that because we all now are having this absolute love fest with Rue Let's imagine that all of the sentient beings on this planet and in our dreams, our dream characters are all within Rue. And as we are embracing our inner Rue, we are embracing all aspects of ourselves, all aspects of this world, the macrocosm, the microcosm. Every feather on Rue's body represents a facet of humanity, of ourselves, and ultimately we discover that they're all just precious. All aspects of humanity and all aspects of life are precious and worthy and they have their place. And if we allow ourselves to be curious about our dreams, our dream characters, and the, even the beings that, that ruffle our feathers, if we, if we move toward them with sensitivity and curiosity, then we'll discover a beautiful, soft, feathery energy that is capable of being the archangel that it is meant to be. Not just something squawking and making noise and and hurting us, but everything is an angel in disguise, including every part of you, especially the parts that we resist the most. Perhaps those are where the archangels are waiting for us to discover them. So just take that big, deep breath. Imagine that you are just like Michael embracing your inner Rue and your inner humanity and your inner world, your inner Putin, your inner great white shark, your inner tribe of wolves. All of that energy is angels in disguise. 
and you've been doing this for so long that it's become a habit, you wake up saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. You look for the gift, and because you have the eyes to see it, the gift reveals itself, and your life becomes one discovery of a gift after the next, after the next, as you move from glory to greater glory to greater glory. And with this, we just allow that inner inner aspect, that inner rooster to crow, to wake us up when we fall asleep and to help us to become even more awake and stabilized in our awakenedness. And for this, we say thank you so much as we move into that future that is unlimited, that is elevated and enlightened and liberated for the highest good of all, most especially you. And so it is. Amen. A woman. A dreams. A ru. A who? A you? That's interesting. Our book on automatic writing is called Awe, the Automatic Writing Experience. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. This has been perfect. This has been beautiful. And Rue has really enjoyed it. So the last, last he, he loves to come on with every show. And, he, and he's watching you because he watches like this. He doesn't watch forward. He watches out the side. And the last few, he's been crowing during meditations. And this one, you can see he's just melted mm. he's just totally melted mm. and so am i so this thank has you been so beautiful and such a special treat kelly and your energy and your gifts that you're sharing here and your wisdom today are exactly what not just others needed what i needed as well right rue you too <laughs> <laughs> oh my god michael this has been pure heaven on earth I so appreciate you and I appreciate all that you're doing and your consciousness as you do it. And I hope this is the beginning of many more opportunities where we get to play together and glow and grow and crow <laughs> for the highest good of all and then some. How does it get any better than this? How does it get any better than this? For everyone out there, this is Michael Saylor saying, be well, have fun, get everything that Kelly has to offer on dreams and begin becoming your own dream to not today and above and beyond all else shine bright. Woohoo! What a beautiful interview on dreams from Kelly Sullivan Walden. Wow, 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 wow. On that note, we were mentioning awe. If you want to dive into dream interpretation from the guides, go to aweautomaticwriting.com and learn automatic writing, which will help you with your dream interpretation and become a mystic. That's who you are. That's who you were meant to be. Join us for our School of Mystics for Wednesdays each month. InspireNationUniversity.com. You can find our School of Mystics. Become the mystic you were meant to be. What's a mystic? You see without eyes. You hear without ears. You know without thought. And you live on both sides of the veil. That's your superpower. Lastly, we're a podcast. Check us out iTunes, Spotify, anywhere that you ingest your podcast. Big thumbs up if you like this. Click the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of upcoming shows, YouTube premieres, live events every Monday night with me and, of course, with Rue. Here's a link to the next amazing video. Love you guys so, so much. Keep on shining bright. Woohoo! How does it get any better than this, Rue? How does it get any better than this? Love you guys.